what I'm going to talk about today, there are five, five, count them, one, two, three, four, five things that I believe in an umbrella term kind of sense that you should never ever say to somebody who has a mental illness or in this case who has an illness, period, end of story. Hey guys, it's Jenna again. Finally, actually, I know in my last video it's been several days and as I mentioned we've gone from doing a vlog every day to barely doing one every couple weeks and that's kind of a boo on my part. I have been going through some tough situations lately and it's been greatly impacting my motivation and my willpower to want to do things as anxiety and depression often do. So I know I rambled a great deal in the last video but I want to go ahead and keep a list of things here in front of me. You guys won't be able to see my list. Um, I just want to go ahead and make sure I stay on track because this is another topic that I can ramble about for hours, become very excited and very off track on very, very quickly. As a matter of fact, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I spent half of a class period talking about this topic with some of my closest students in my Creative Writing 2 class at the end of the day. And a lot of them have experienced mental illness either personally or they have experienced episodes of mental illness through a friend or a relative so that's kind of what just led to us talking about it they knew I was not feeling well and we got onto a very heated kind of one-sided but well meant and detailed topic that really needs to be spoken about and there's tons of articles written there out there in the world on this I mean if you go to Google and I'm actually going to go to Google right now since I'm sitting in front of my good old computer and if you plug in the words things never to say some to somebody with a mental illness Immediately, you get 7,300,000 results. Yeah. From Google. So this has been spoken about time and again, but it's something that has always been near and dear to my heart, and my students made me realize indirectly today that it'd be a perfect topic for me to speak with you guys about. And what I'm going to talk about today, there are five, five, count them, one, two, three, four, five, things that I believe in an umbrella term kind of sense that you should never ever say to somebody who has a mental illness, or in this case, who has an illness, period, end of story. I want to start you guys off with one specific statistic, though. One out of four, that's 25%, one in four people will experience some form of a mental illness or a mental illness-like episode in their lifetime. That's a lot. I mean, if you figure 25% of our population, or even just 25% of the world population, that's a lot of people. And because mental health has always been so stigmatized, I don't think people are willing to accept a number such as that, and it's quite alarming. So, like I said, these are the five things I want to talk about in regards to mental illness. Number one, never tell a person who has mental illness that they are defined by their illness. You say the cancer chick. You wouldn't say the heart attack hunky. You wouldn't say things like that to a person who has a physical ailment, yet we have definitions for people as the depressed boy. 
the suicidal kid. Or the one I get, politely, though usually I don't get the polite version of this, the bipolar girl or the bipolar chick. I've been called that so many times, both behind my back and to my face, it's really unnerving. And it's horrible to call a person with a qualifier that is their illness by, you know, you're defining them by their illness and we try to live our lives daily as if we are not defined by our illnesses. Just like anybody who has cancer or anybody who has Crohn's disease or RA or Alzheimer's tries to live their lives as if they are not defined by their disease. And a lot of the time when people are talking about mental illnesses and it's difficult for us to articulate how we feel. There's a disconnect in our brains and we really just can't articulate how we feel. So it leads into us sounding like we're whining, especially when we're called things like the bipolar chick or the depressed kid or the suicidal kid. And that leads me into number two. Never say somebody has it worse off than I do. Logically, yes, I know there are people in this world who have life much harder than I do. My sad story is, you know, smallest violin playing kind of hard story. And a lot of people with mental illness receive that kind of reply from others about their mental illness and it's an attempt to make us feel better but really all it does is make us feel worse because it does make us feel like we're whining and therefore what we have to say is not important and it undermines how we feel and how we survive or struggle to survive with being ill and like I said probably in a previous video encouragement's a great thing work together be together, but that goes to number three. <sighs> Encouragement is well meant. I don't blame you for trying to encourage me or somebody else who has mental illness, but sometimes it can be a sad reminder that we're stuck in this mode. And I've been told things in a very sincere voice that otherwise you're like, okay, don't you wouldn't say that to a person who has a physical ailment. You wouldn't tell the person who has cancer to get over it or to deal with it, would you? It's a horrible thing to say to somebody that has a physical ailment of some kind. So why would you logically say that to somebody who has a mental illness? We can't control our illness no more than somebody with a physical ailment can. And that goes right to number four. Don't tell me to change my mood or my attitude. One, I usually don't have control over those things, being bipolar. It's more like me trying to control them or stop them from controlling me. It's, you know, a, not a cart before the horse situation here. It's the cart trying to keep up with the horse, literally, and usually breaking down and failing to do so. And it's really difficult to hear things of, don't worry about it. You'll be better soon. No, this doesn't go away. My illness does not define me. But until there's a cure that is not a lobotomy or electrotherapy, I'm stuck with bipolar for the rest of my life. It is not going away. And which makes me very infuriated. And this is one of the topics that we kind of catapulted on in my creative writing class today and that my students and I really focused on. And that's number five. Having a mental illness is not trendy. I know some teenagers especially and some young adults or people in their 20s and 30s may seem like it's just for attention or just over dramatics and 
theatrics. No, it's not those things. It's not a trend. It's not cool. So calling us something like emo or goth or even calling us a cutter, it, it, that's a slap in the face. Especially to those of us who don't stereotypically take on those roles. Because a person who's actually a cutter doesn't want the world to know about it. They don't display it. A true cutter hides it because they're embarrassed. Because they're ashamed. So it really infuriates me when people try to pass it off as it's just a phase or it's just a trend. Like I said, I'm stuck with bipolar till the day I die. I'll be medicated for it for the majority of my life. There's a good chance that I'm going to pass it on to my kids. It, One of my nephews has it. So you know there's a family trace of it somewhere. And my students and I got on a much more heated note with it being trendy that I don't think I can fit into this video and I really don't want to. So I'm going to probably do another video about how it's not trendy to be bipolar as far as analyzing how people act with a mental illness versus how society thinks they act. So that's going to be a future video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please take what I've said to heart. Again, these are just umbrella categories, not really specific. A lot of the lists that are out there are pretty specific of the things never to say. And it's like, okay, somebody has been told some pretty horrible things over their life and they kept track. I like to categorize things. It's easier that way. So just keep these in mind. And again, I'm not the person, I'm not the bipolar person. I'm the person with bipolar. I mean, they changed that mindset in special education for a reason. It's not the ADHD child anymore. The politically correct and required way to say it is the child with ADHD. You can't define us by our illness. Just like you can't define anybody else or shouldn't define anybody else who has an illness by theirs. Physical or mental. So that's all for today. At least it was a little bit more organized ranting. But anyway, hopefully I'll talk to you guys later in the future. And we'll get videos back on a regular schedule here. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Much love. Bye-bye.